Hey y'all, welcome back to Math Rescue. I'm Andre, your certified math coach. Today we're talking about how to write the algebraic form of a quadratic inequality. This skill can be tricky because it mixes three different ideas at once. The parabola, the inequality symbol, and the test point. But if you get those in the right order, the rule basically writes itself. I'm going to show you how to pick the correct boundary equation, decide whether the line is solid or dashed, choose the right inequality symbol, and how to check your work with a test point. Feel free to pause after each step and copy what I do, because if you can graph it, you can definitely write it. Grab a pencil. Let's turn a shaded parabola into a clean inequality. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my vertex on the uh, parabola. The reason I want to mark my vertex is because I can do most of this relatively straightforward using vertex form. We'll talk about that in a second. So my vertex is at 2, 3. Vertex form is y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. If you're looking at this form, you're saying, where did I get that from? It probably came from your notes. This form, vertex form, is, is always the same. To fill in vertex form, I really just need three parameters. I need the value of a, the value of h, the value of k, and we just found two of them. We just found h and k. Those are over here. We grabbed them from the graph, and they're pretty straightforward to find. So let me go ahead and fill those in. y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared. Oh. Two plus three. All right. From here, we still need the a value. So to figure out the a value, if you take a look at our equation here, our equation has three variables left inside of it. One of those three variables is a parameter. So a is still a parameter, but in total I have one, two, three variables. If I can eliminate two of those variables, then a will be the only unknown left and I could solve for that unknown. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a point off the graph. It looks like we have a y-intercept here. That looks like it is the ordered pair 0, negative 5. And I'm just going to go ahead and plug that in for x and y. And once x and y are out of the picture, I can solve for a. Let me try that. So we get negative 5 equals a times the quantity 0 minus 2 squared plus 3. All right, now we have a solvable equation, solvable for a. Let me go ahead and solve it. Negative 5 equals a times the quantity negative 2 squared plus 3. There's multiplication right in here. I'm going to go ahead and just keep simplifying and bringing it down. A times 4. I could also write that as 4a. Um, from here, we're going to go ahead and start using inverse operations. Get negative 8 is equal to 4a. So a has to be negative 2. All right, so now we have our a value. That was the last parameter that we needed in order to fill in vertex form. Let me go ahead and fill that in. y equals negative 2, which was our a value that we just found. x minus h squared plus k. All right, so now we have our boundary for the parabola. The next thing that I could figure out is whether or not uh, we are going to use uh, which inequality sign we're going to use. So there's four to pick from. We could have less than, less than or equal to, greater than, and greater than or equal to. 
right off the bat, because our boundary parabola is dashed, I don't want anything that could be equal to. Um, we are being represented by all the values that are less than our uh, boundary line. Uh, I can tell because we shade it underneath the parabola. So let me go ahead and I'm going to assume it's the less than sign. So we could set up y is less than negative 2 times the quantity x minus 2 squared plus 3. Now I'm pretty sure this is correct, but um, if I want to be super, super certain, what I can do is just make sure that my shading makes sense with the quadratic inequality that I have. So I'm going to pick a test point in the shaded part. The ordered pair for this text, test point is 2, 0. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that in for x and y. And if I end up with a true statement, that means I've done everything correctly. So we end up with 0 is less than negative 2 times the quantity 2 minus 2 squared plus 3. Simplifying, I get 0 is less than negative 2 times 0 plus 3. And uh, finally, I get 0 is less than 3. That is a true statement. So everything looks good. Everything looks great. We are all set. I'm Andre, your certified math coach. See you next time.